I'm Dave Broom. I'm a spirits writer. I've been writing about it for about 20 years now. Uh, my career, if you want to call it that, uh, started in a bottling line, a whiskey bottling line, where I was lifting cases of it. And then after uni, I worked in Oddbins for a while, and then was a features editor uh, for a drinks trade weekly, and finally went freelance and began specialising in spirits. And uh, you know, the accent must have had something to do with it because uh, I've ended up really specialising in whisky and this is the, the second edition of the, the World Atlas of Whisky so I, I'm really, really chuffed uh, and it kind of reflects what's happening in, in the whisky world out there uh, which is absolutely flying at the moment. The book has been fully updated but also extended uh, to cover uh, all what is happening within whisky at the moment. I mean the Irish section for example, I mean the number of new distilleries which are opening up in Ireland at the moment is quite remarkable. There's Eichlinville, the Belfast distillery, uh, Kilbegan which is now a distillery in its own right, Tullamore Dew distillery has just opened, uh, Dingle is making fantastic whiskies down there and there's more of a focus also on, on uh, single pot still as well which is becoming a, a major force once again with an Irish whisky. Japan's been updated as well, uh, more on uh, Karuza and Fujikotemba but a, a bigger section on Chichibu which is really making waves now, uh, Mars which has reopened since the uh, first distillery and White Oak wh which is up and growing as well. Uh, and then within uh, the, the North American section, finally, and I'm delighted about this, uh, much more of a focus on Canada. So every single Canadian distillery has now been fully profiled. Alberta Highwood, Black Velvet, Gimli, Hiram Walker, Canadian Club, Valleyfield, Forty Creek, and also Canadian Craft Distillers. I mean, it, it's funny to think it was just five years ago I was researching the, the first uh, edition of this, and actually a second edition is now needed, because what has happened in that intervening period is that whiskey has just exploded around the world out with its its existing heartlands of Scotland and Ireland, Japan and America and Canada really spreading all through the world. I mean the amazing expansion of distillation that's taking place in England uh, France now has 20 distilleries and the number of distilleries uh, making whiskey in, in Scandinavia and German speaking Europe is quite extraordinary and the fascinating thing for me chatting to them was they're all asking themselves this question what is whiskey they're, they're all they're all existing whiskey lovers but they're not following necessarily a, a scottish template or an american template they're saying what grows around us uh, what grains are here well if we've got oats and rye and spelt we'll use them what sort of distillation techniques we don't have to use the same distillation techniques as are used in existing uh, heartlands of whiskey what oak types uh, what wood types perhaps if we're using smoke, we don't have to use peat. There might not be peat, but how are our foods smoked? Uh, so it could be nettles, as it is in one distillery in, in Denmark, or it could be wood in, uh, all across Europe, or in Iceland, sheep dung. Everything is open. Everything is open to question. One of the, the biggest changes uh, has taken place in America uh, with craft distillers. I mean, you know, just look at that. Uh, that's... 250 distilleries in, in America which are making whiskey at the moment. It is quite, quite amazing. Uh, and it was the first edition, it was just beginning to get going. There were some old established ones, but now you know, every state virtually has got a distillery or two making whiskey. And once again, this idea of what craft is is really a hot topic uh, within America. Is it just small scale? Well, I, personally speaking, I would say all distillers are craftsmen. Uh, it, it's not actually dictated by how big or how small you are. I think it's more of a mental approach about artistry. But you know, for for the for the book's reference, this is a smaller scale distiller, so you haven't necessarily heard of. Uh, and her doing fascinating things. You know, whether in New York, uh, whether down in Tennessee and Kentucky, whether in Texas, uh, you know, whether out, out up in Seattle or Utah, all of these distillers are actually finding their own way to make their own whiskey. Uh, and America is really, really leading the way uh, in in this questing and questioning of what whiskey is. Uh, Westland, for example, wanted to make themselves not not craft. They don't describe themselves as a craft distiller. A lot of craftsmen wanted to be America's major single malt brand, but they're making single malt in a way very, very different to to the way it's made in Scotland. Balcones uh, with Chip Tate, who, who comes up with, with a line. We're not making whiskey in Texas, we're making Texan whiskey. And that underlines everything that's happening in the great distillers in, in the US. 
they're making whiskies which speak of their place. And I think you can extend that to the rest of the world as well. 